In the fourth year after the attainment of awakening, the world honored one stayed for a while in a large forest at Vaishali. Then he headed north and came to Shravasti and stayed at Jetta's Grove Monastery. In the fifth month of that year there was a long dry spell, causing the rivers to slow to a trickle, which in turn created irrigation problems. The two cities of Kapilavastu and Kolya saw struggles arising over the water of the river Rohini, which flowed between them. It happened to be the time when agriculture required water. The scarcity of water caused the farmers on one bank to speak ill of those on the opposite bank, until finally, armed with clubs and swords, they shed blood. The world honored one heard of this strife at the Jetta's Grove Monastery and hurried back to Kapilavastu in time to position himself between the two opposing armies. From both armies came loud cries, O world honored one, world honored one. Seeing you there makes it impossible to release our arrows. Then those on both sides threw down their weapons. The world honored one, seeing this, summoned the leaders of both armies and asked them, Why is it that you have congregated here? Why are you about to engage in battle? To this both leaders answered that it was over water needed for irrigation. Compared with human life, how valuable is water? The leaders answered that compared with human life the value of water was almost nothing. Why, then, is it that for water, which has so little value, you are all trying to destroy human lives, which is invaluable? Saying this, the Buddha related the following story. There was once a lion with black fur who always lay down at the root of the pandana tree and waited for other animals to come by. Once a dead branch, broken by the wind, fell on the lion's back. Suddenly frightened, the lion ran away. But as he looked behind, he could see that there was no one chasing after him. The lion then reasoned that the spirit of the tree hated him and was trying to keep him away from under the tree. Angered, the lion returned and, taking a firm bite on the trunk, remarked, I have not eaten even one of your leaves, nor have I broken even a branch. You allow other animals to rest under your branches, but do not allow me to do so. What have I done to you? I shall have you uprooted, and your branches cut. Saying these unkind words, the lion went to look for someone to do this. Just then a carpenter who made carts came looking for a tree. The lion showed him where the pandana tree was and tried to get the carpenter to cut the tree down. As the carpenter started to cut, the tree spirit, terrified, appeared and told the carpenter what to do, you seem to want to cut this tree and make a cart. If you were to place the hide from the black lion's neck on the wheels, they will be strengthened. You should kill the lion and take his hide. The carpenter gladly followed the advice and killed the black lion. He then cut down the tree and returned to the village. The Buddha said, as this story shows, it is common for beings to fight among themselves over trivial misunderstandings, hurting and even killing each other. He explained the meaning with the following verse. Thus Plasi tree contends with beast, and beast with tree contends. So each with mutual dispute to death the other sends. So among men, where a feud or quarrel doth arise. They, as the beast and tree did now, cut capers peacock-wise. This tell I you, that well is you what time ye are at one. Be of one mind, and quarrel not, as beast and tree have done. Learn peace with all men, this the wise all praise, and who is fame. Of peace and righteousness, he sure will final peace attain. He continued with another story. Along the banks of the western sea there was a forest in which some horse chestnut trees grew. In that forest, in a hemp palm bush under a horse chestnut tree, there lived a rabbit. Suddenly the rabbit wondered what could be done if the world were to end abruptly. At that very moment, a horse chestnut fell on the leaves of the hemp palm bush and made a sharp sound. The rabbit was frightened, thinking that now the world was falling apart. Without looking back, he ran off. The other rabbits, seeing him speeding away, sensed that something unusual had happened, followed him, and asked what was going on. The first rabbit answered that the world had started to fall apart and kept on running. The second rabbit, now alarmed, also started speeding away after the first. Then the third and fourth rabbit started running, until thousands of rabbits were running away. In this the deer joined and were followed by the boars, the water buffaloes, and along with them the rhinoceroses, tigers, lions, and elephants, as well as all the other animals, until the line of frightened animals extended for miles and miles. At that time there was a lion observing what was going on. 
Learning that the animals were afraid that the earth was falling apart, he felt that such a thing could not really happen and that the first rabbit must have heard a sharp noise and mistaken it for the earth's falling apart. Now, this lion thought that if he were to leave things to their course all the animals would be doomed. So, the lion started running, past the leaders of the herd, and waited for the herd at the foot of the mountain. As the animals came close, the lion gave a loud roar. Then the rabbit running ahead stopped, and the animals, tens of thousands in number, all stopped suddenly. The lion advanced to the middle of the herd and asked them why they were all running. The animals answered that it was because the earth was falling apart. When the lion asked if anyone had seen it, some animals said the elephant knew about it. When the elephant was asked whether he had seen it or not, the elephant said that he did not know about it but had heard it from a lion. Then the animals started asking one another, the lion saying he heard it from the tiger, the tiger from the rhinoceros, and so on until it reached the first rabbit, who had seen it. The lion then asked the rabbit, did you really see the world falling apart? To this the rabbit answered that it was indeed true, and that he had seen the world fall apart. The lion asked again, where were you at the time, and when did you see it happen? The rabbit answered that he was under the horse chestnut tree by the western sea thinking that it would be a terrible thing if the world were to fall apart when he heard a sharp rattling sound and started running. The lion, now fully aware of the situation, had the animals remain there. With the rabbit at his back, he returned to the palm bush and told the rabbit to point to the exact place he had heard the sound. The rabbit was still frightened and would not approach the area. He recited the verse. From the spot where I did dwell. Issued forth a fearful thud. What it was I could not tell. Nor what caused it understood. The lion made a careful study of the spot and, picking up the horse chestnut and confirming that there was nothing unusual, returned to the herd. Showing the animals the horse chestnut, he dispelled their fears. The Buddha continued, if the lion had not taught them, countless animals would have kept on running until they had driven themselves into the sea and drowned. O oh leaders, one must always have clear and sound understanding. It must also be remembered that because of some small misunderstanding, tens of thousands can be agitated and, in the end, all can be led to their doom. The Buddha then identified the birth, saying, at that time I myself was the lion. It was all owing to myself, the Bodhisattva, that they escaped death. The Buddha then recited the following verse. Alarmed at sound of fallen fruit. A hare once ran away. The other beasts all followed suit. Moved by that hare's dismay. They hastened not to view the scene. But lent a willing ear. To idle gossip, and were clean. Distraught with foolish fear. They who to wisdom's calm delight and virtue's heights attain, though ill example should invite, such panic fear disdain. The people of the two cities rejoiced in the Buddha's instructions, and many from noble families entered the Buddha's Sangha. The Buddha had them follow him as he continued his instruction at the two palaces and stayed in the Negroda forest outside Kapilavastu. One day Mahaprajapati, with two new robes in hand, called on the Buddha and said, O Buddha, these two robes were made of thread that I made and were woven with my own hands. Please have pity on me by accepting them. To this the Buddha answered, Mahaprajapati, you should offer them to the Sangha and then I, too, will be receiving them. Mahaprajapati asked the Buddha three times, and the Buddha gave her the same answer each time, telling her to make the gift to the Sangha. Ananda, standing beside them and hearing the dialogue, now came forward, saying, O world honored one, please accept the robes that Mahaprajapati offers, for she has served you well. She is your aunt and she nurtured you, when you were an infant, after the passing of Queen Maya, she offered you her breast. The world honored one has also bestowed upon her great benefits. She sought refuge in the three treasures, and has abstained from taking life, has abstained from taking things not given to her and has never engaged in sexual misconduct, lied, or taken liquor. Following the five precepts, she has put her unfaltering trust in the three treasures, and has eradicated all doubts in the teaching of the Four Noble Truths. The Buddha has given her these great benefits. Please believe in the sincerity of her intentions. 
The Buddha accepted the charity of Mahaprajapati, as requested by Ananda, and he taught the virtues of the practice of charity. <laughs>